Democratic presidential candidate, former mayor, Pete Buttigieg, South Bend, Indiana. I'm telling you, you've got the excitement here in New Hampshire. Your no. supporters love you. Yeah, the momentum's fantastic. We were just out at a couple uh, polling sites where uh, we got our volunteers shivering in the cold and, and uh, you know, holding our signs and uh, uh, just love the energy. So we'll keep pushing all the way until the polling closes, but uh, we feel very good about New Hampshire. So it's primary day in New Hampshire. I mean, it's, uh, again, for, for a lot of people that love politics and follow politics, this is as good as it gets. Uh, talk about waking up this morning and uh, how your day's already started and well, what's it, on your mind. Yeah, so uh, the day began with uh, bringing coffee and donuts to, to supporters who were out there at, at the early polling uh, uh, sites, mm -hmm. uh, you know, even before dawn. And, and you know, it, it's this great civic ritual of democratic participation and uh, exciting to see and also remarkable to think that we've been at this more than a year now, uh, mm -hmm. spreading our message about how we can put together uh, a campaign based on belonging, the campaign that I believe will ultimately go on and defeat Donald Trump. And, you know, with him right here in this state last night, I think it reminded us all of what's at stake in making sure that we do have the campaign and the nominee who can bring an end to the Trump presidency because we can't afford four more years of this. Are you going to win tonight? We think so. We think it's going to be a, a really good night. Now, I know we're, we're up against some neighborhood competition, New England senators uh, from states on either side, but I still think we're going to have a great showing. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had Vice President Biden here a few minutes ago. His argument, he's sort of conceded he's not going to do terribly well here, but he said, let me get to South Carolina, let me get to Nevada, let me get to more diverse states that are more reflective of the country. It's not news to you that you've struggled with African-American voters, Latino voters that will be coming up now that we move away from Iowa and New Hampshire. Hampshire. What is your message to them as you move down toward those states? Well, first of all, as I speak with voters of color, uh, we're talking about uh, uh, folks who have the most to lose in so many ways. No one is feeling the most, uh, no one is feeling the pain of living in this administration more than voters of color. And as we engage with Latino voters, especially, but not only in Nevada, as we reach out to black voters in the South, uh, I know how many have a laser focus on making sure that we defeat Donald Trump. And as you can see, by the way, numbers are jumping around. Many are taking a second look at candidates now that we've gotten past the phase where there's about 20 of us uh, and really down to the wire where there's a handful of options, very different visions on what it's going to take uh, not only to win the election, but to move the country what's, forward. What's your diagnosis, just personally, of why you've struggled with African-American voters? Well, look, black voters have every reason to be skeptical of new faces, uh, especially after a feeling of having been taken for granted, and, and often even taken for granted in the Democratic Party. And it's different when you haven't had years or, or decades to earn a level of credibility. But we're taking every opportunity to make sure that I'm engaging with voters who want to know, yes, what your plan is. And we've put forward the most comprehensive vision for black America, I think of any campaign in this cycle, but not just what's in your plans, who you are. And again, critically, how are you going to win? Uh, that's what we're going to be taking as our message through Nevada, South Carolina, and on into the states that follow. And uh, of course, in order to earn this nomination, uh, it is critical to earn the support of voters of every background. And I want to make sure black voters, uh, Latino voters, and others across the country know that uh, I will not write any vote off mm -hmm. and I will not take anyone for granted. You, uh, um, go ahead. Go ahead, no, just, you, know, you got 14 delegates out of Iowa, as far as we can tell, and, and Bernie Sanders got 12. You are the official front runner. Number one, how does that feel right now? I well, mean, you know, you know it, it's all the more reason to keep an underdog mentality. You got to keep your head down and, and keep pushing. But, uh, you know, it was remarkable what happened. I don't think a year ago anybody uh, would have uh, predicted that this was where we would be. I believed in our message, but uh, this campaign began with a, a staff of four. Uh, no personal fortune, no name recognition, just this idea. And what we saw in Iowa is that idea uh, can gather a lot of different kinds of people together. But New Hampshire is a state that thinks for itself. Nobody tells New Hampshire oh, what to do. True. And so uh, being here is a chance to demonstrate in a different geography that kind of support. But you, you, you've, you've gotten this far, and, and it's, it's remarkable from South Bend to where you are now. There are candidates with a lot more money and a lot more experience than 
you. Yeah. How do you sustain that argument that, that you, the, the new guy from South Bend, is the guy? Well, in many ways, that is the argument. It's the idea that we need to bring a different perspective to Washington. Look, I'm no stranger to governing, I'm no stranger to service, and I'm no stranger to holding office. But I think there's a sense right now that we need to turn the page and do something different. And uh, what I'm offering is a perspective that I think uh, lines up with perspectives from communities like mine, industrial cities, small communities, and even in our biggest cities, uh, a lot of areas where people feel like the, the political process just isn't speaking to them. Mm -hmm. This is our opportunity to bring those voices to Washington. And I think that's part of how we've been able to uh, gather this unlikely coalition together and build the support that we have. We had uh, Trump rally last night here in Manchester, and there were people who were lined up for hours, standing in the cold rain for hours and hours to be there for many more hours and then couldn't leave for hours. <laughs> um, and I think it's safe to say that a lot of those people will vote for Donald Trump. They will show up at the polls if they'll show up the way they did yesterday. Yeah. If you could be in a room for five minutes with every single one of those people, and I believe it was 12,000 people who showed up, but if you could talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, what would you say? Well, I'd say that uh, the president thinks that you're a sucker. He thinks you're not going to notice that the only economic promise he's actually kept is cutting taxes on corporations and the wealthy. He thinks you're not going to notice that manufacturing is in recession. He thinks you're not going to notice that he put out a budget yesterday, the same day he came here into New Hampshire, cutting education, cutting environmental protection. But not just that, he's opened the door to cutting Social Security and Medicaid and Medicare, the very things he swore up and down to protect. So maybe in, in the past, folks were going to give him a pass on this or that character flaw, but this is more than just a question of overlooking uh, certain deficiencies. The totality of this presidency is one that has divided the country and has uh, broken promise after promise to working people, uh, to, to but farmers. But they're still but, giving him a pass right now. I, well, look, you're always going to have your base, right? And, and I mean, the day he resigned in disgrace, Richard Nixon had 25 percent of the country with him. So this is not about the idea that uh, you can shake off every Trump supporter. It's about the knowledge that there is a powerful American majority right now that wants to see this country move in a different direction, that maybe doesn't agree on everything, but can agree on being tired of looking so, their but, 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 in the eye and but, explaining this Let, thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.